Hey guys, it's Dakota Wixom here from allthingsmotion.net. As promised, today we're going to create a dynamic audio waveform visualization using Trap Code Form. Uh, to start, you should know that Trap Code Form is required for this tutorial. It is a third-party plugin, so if you don't have it, uh, you're going to have to go purchase it in order to follow along. Uh, with that, this is what we're going to be creating today. Alright, let's hop into After Effects here. Here is the file that I was working from. I do have color correction turned off at the moment. There's just a nice glow on here. Um, you can see that there's a bunch of different cameras, and this is done to achieve the uh, different shots uh, that you saw in the example. I think it brings a lot more life to the animations, and it should be done more often. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Um, here's the uh, trap code form layer. Uh, that we're going to be using. There's a audio reaction going on and also a uh, sphere um, displacement field. Alright, let's get to it. So, to start we're going to create a composition, a new composition. I'm just going to call this Master Tut because I have the example. Um, and today I'm going to be working in a much lower resolution than I normally do because of the uh, inherent difficulties in rendering these types of animations. The animation that you saw was rendered in 720p. Um, so if you don't have a new computer, a fairly fast computer, you might want to consider stepping down your resolution as well. I'm going to create a new solid. Uh, you can do that by doing Command Y. This is just going to be our background layers. So um, I mean, I guess the color didn't really matter because we're going to apply a ramp. I'm going to call it BG for background, just to reference. Going to go to Effect Generate and Ramp. Going to change this to a radial ramp. Make sure the end color is darker. The start color, I'm just going to make a nice, you know, dark bluish. Yeah, as usual. We're also going to create another new solid. This will be our trap code form layer. Oops, form. Make sure it's comp size. And then we're going to do effect trap code form. And of course, if you don't have this plugin, you're going to need to purchase it. And um, it's, it's definitely worth purchasing if you do any type of motion graphics. Um, it's a very valuable tool to have. So I just uh, changed the number of strings in Z to 1, because um, that'll be the number of strings that are away from the camera. Speaking of, let's create a camera. Layer, new camera. I'm going to do 35 millimeters. You can use whatever you want. Uh, let's go back into the trap code form layer. Just increase the size so it's um, you know going to cover the whole composition. There we go. OK, and then we're going to go into the string settings here. Raise the density a little bit. Um, we're also going to taper the size uh, and also the opacity of the strings. And what this will do is create just a little fall off at the edge. It's a real nice effect, I think. Um, and of course, if your size is too big uh, in the x-axis, you're not going to be able to see the fall off. So you might just adjust that accordingly. Okay, um, now we're going to create an audio reaction. So in order to do that, you need to go back into your project pane here, drag in uh, some form of audio. Um, I'm just going to move it so there's a little bit more interesting part of the song here. Okay, and we're going to go back to the trap code form layer, effect controls. Now we're going to scroll down to our audio react layer again. Drop in our music track here. Okay, uh, we're going to open the reactor one. The time offset is the point in time that the song will be analyzed. So if you, s if you uh, increase this, it's going to start the animation on your layer a little bit further. Uh, in other in either direction so you might want to be careful of that um, I'm gonna leave the frequency at 100 with a width of 50 strength is fine we're gonna map this to the uh, uh, we're gonna map this to the displacement in Z so that means as the uh, song gets louder it's gonna displace the entire layer uh, it's gonna make it closer to the camera we're going to set our delay max to 0.5, and that's real important uh, because that means it's going to take 0.5 seconds for the song to affect 
uh, the entire layer. In other words, it's going to be this wave kind of thing, because each point here is actually a different uh, point in time. It should take 0.5 seconds to go all the way across. Very interesting. That's real important. Make sure you uh, set the delay. And of course, you can change it to whatever you want. If you want it to come from the right and then go to the left, you can switch that here, you know, or up and down, whatever you want. I like left to right, though. I think it makes more sense. Uh, so now we're going to go into the second reactor here. This is going to be for dispersion. Um, so in order to do that, we first need to turn up the dispersion. Now realize this is going to affect the whole layer, of course. Um, actually, let me just set this like 150, nothing too extreme. Yeah, uh, and then we're uh, going to map this to the disbursement, of course. So if you didn't have the disbursement cranked up here, um, you would not see anything here, uh, even though it was mapped. Um, our strength, we're also going to need to crank up a little bit. And, actually maybe not that much. That might have been a little overkill. <laughs> In fact... Uh, we'll, we'll just experiment with that later here. We're going to change the frequency, though, which it might change this, to 14,000 uh, hertz. And uh, just so you know, uh, of course, the lower frequency notes, like bass drums, they're going to be real close to about 100 hertz. The width is the uh, number of hertz in either direction that your uh, that trap code form is going to be searching for values to react to. Um, and 14,000 is about uh, the frequency of the average snare drum. So you might just adjust that according to what you see in the song. You might also uh, bring up the width um, so it'll search a little bit further for notes. And as we move forward in time, we should see at some point uh, the layer being affected. Now, if you don't see it being affected, you might need to crank up the strength. So we'll just do that real quick here. Yeah. So you can see our disbursement is affecting it now. And of course, you're going to need to set the, uh, the delay to 0.5 again. If you don't do that, the whole layer is going to be affected. Yeah. So now you can see there's, there's a little bit of an effect, and then boom, then the snare drum hits, and then it goes off again. Uh, so that way you can just, you know, you can tell what's going on. So I might turn down the strength again to, I don't know, 300. Okay, we're going to need more. So this is just kind of a trial and error thing. And uh, whatever numbers you use, you know, it's going to come out with a different effect, so it's totally up to you, uh, whatever you want to use. Fractal field um, will displace, um, it'll create kind of an uneven uh, particle stream. I don't think we're going to use that today. Uh, I will show you the spherical field, which, uh, as you saw in the example, when the coin drops, there's this little spherical field that shows up in the middle. Uh, kind of looks like a coin. I thought that was cool. Um, so in order to do that, you need to turn on the spherical field uh, strength. Let's just leave it at 100 here. Um, now, if you don't see it affecting anything, that's because the particles are actually higher in Z space than the, the sphere is affecting. So you just need to crank up the radius of the sphere. One thing you might also do, now realize that's going to make it bigger in every direction, so you might just change the scale in Z so that it's taller. There you go, and now you can see it. And of course you can change the radius again, like I said, and shrink this or make it bigger, but that's about that's about what I want. You can also uh, change the feathering, so you can see now the particles coming in just immediately, you know, hop over. Um, if you add a little bit more of a feather, uh, it's going to be a little bit more gradual. So, And likewise, if you set it to zero, it's just going to immediately jump, you know. So, but I like 50. Right there. Again, that's up to you. You can also visualize the field if that helps. Um, it's kind of confusing to me though, so I just kind of I just kind of go for it. Um, World transform uh, will move the entire layer. So if you need to adjust the layer to your camera, you know, rotate the entire thing 90 degrees, you can do that here. But uh, for us today, we're just going to create a different camera because that's much easier and much more interesting. So, in order to do that, I mean, you just do layer, new camera. And, you know, at whatever point you want to change shots, let's go to about 10 seconds here. Uh, and then it's going to last, you know, it's going to last 10 seconds, so about 10 to 20 seconds. So here's our second camera. Of course, it's not going to look any different other than the fact that we changed in time. Uh, so, you're just going to bring up the camera tool here. You can also press C. 
rotate it. C will cycle through the uh, types of camera tools. So now we're just in the pan mode here. There you go. So now you can see something interesting happening down there. Uh, you can also see our sphere is way too tall. Uh, so you might go back into trap code form here, go into the spherical field, and uh, where is it? Scale Z. Just change that. I don't know, 300. There. So it's still tall enough, but it won't do that crazy loop thing. Um, yeah, so uh, you can create new cameras and have whatever shots you want going on. You can have the cameras rotating. Um, but it's pretty straightforward. You might also consider turning on motion blur and then turning on motion blur for the composition. Of course, that is going to take much longer to render. If you go into the form layer again, we can go into the particle settings. And here you can change the opacity of the particles. So let's just set it about, I don't know, 50%. And what that'll do is where the particles come together, you know, like here there's a lot of particles that are crossing, they're going to be brighter. Um, because they're an overlaying opacity, they're not all 100% uh, solid. So it just creates a little bit of visual interest. You might even consider making this lower and making the size of the particles larger. Of course, that's going to increase the thickness of your lines. So it's up to you again. Make sure the transfer mode is on add. Uh, screen might also work, but I'd do add. Um, and here's another interesting thing. If you go back to the project panel, you can alt click on this guy here, 8BPC. That means 8 bits per channel. Now if you increase that to 16 or 32, it's going to take much longer to render. But you can see, I don't know if, well, I don't know if you can see on the uh, screen recording here, but you get over bright values. So if I go into the info here, normally the values up here are just f from a range of 0 to 1. Uh, but now, I mean, it's going up 0 to 4. So that means uh, there's over bright pixels. And when you blur them, uh, so let's just do something fun here. We'll just create a little fast blur on the layer. I don't know, three pixels. Repeat the edges. Uh, it creates a real nice, almost glow kind of effect. Uh, very cool. So now you can also drag in a uh, stylized glow. And of course, that creates that crazy effect. So you might want to crank down the intensity here to like 0.1 and then increase the radius. Gives you a nice glow, you know, maybe crank it up a little bit more. Well, not that much. Yeah, so that's up to you. You can change the threshold and things like that. So, <laughs> I don't like that, but it's up to you. Um, also, you can go into the spherical field here, and you can animate the strength. So, say you want the... Uh, oh, let's let it load here. So, let's say you want the strength to start at zero. Whoops. Oh, by the way, you can go negative. It'll suck in the, the pixels. Kind of strange. Um, so if you want it to start at zero, you know, move up to... You can see it's gone now. Move up to 100, and then fade out again to zero. There. So your, fact, your uh, spherical uh, field is going to just kind of fade in and affect the uh, area, and then it's going to fade out. Uh, I might render here. I'm not sure if it's going to take forever. We'll see. Yeah, it's going to take a while. All right, I'm going to pause the recording so you guys can uh, see it here. All right, so I just rendered about half of it here. So you can see fractal field here and or sorry not the fractal field the spherical field just kind of grows on pretty cool uh, and then it'll you know fade out so uh, in my original animation I changed the color of course of the uh, of the uh, form layer here want to pick kind of a not saturated color because they're they're going to overlay in 32 bits per channel uh, and become really really bright uh, and then you can also just create, you know, some adjustment layers, get some blurs going, some glows. I like trap code shine. Um, creates a real cool effect. Oh, that's cool right there, actually. <laughs> so, but you normally change the transfer mode to add. And then you can colorize it and stuff like that. 
So uh, it's up to you. You can do a lot of stuff with this. Um, and of course, you don't have to use box strings as the base form. You can use an object even, a sphere, a grid. Um, I mean, you, you can really do anything because you can create your own objects uh, and then have it map uh, or react to any type of audio. So it's very cool. You can have a bunch of different reactors, more spherical fields. You can have two spherical fields and have them animate, come together. There's a lot of possibilities. So if you guys create something cool, just send it to me, drop it in the comments below, and uh, I'll probably post it on my site just so others can see. So that's it for today. We're going to get some more tutorials to you guys soon. So stay tuned and uh, be sure to subscribe and check out the other tutorials on allthingsmotion.net slash tutorials. And that's it, so I'll see you guys later. Thanks.